And I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are on why certain people attach themselves to certain ideologies and how that justifies their, their pain or their trauma. Yeah. So I talk about the brain's development and in early life, if you are overly stressed, you tend to then enhance your survival systems, your, your systems that keep you alive, which include the stress response and also the emotion systems of fear and anger and um, panic and when you're, um, instead of growing, what you're supposed to be growing is all these social capacities and attunement and engagement with others. That's what's supposed to grow all sorts of nonverbal uh, understanding and skills in before language starts. You're supposed to be developing that. But if you've been stressed as a baby, as I've mentioned, uh, you're gonna, not going to grow those. You're going to enhance these survival systems and then you're not going to grow the capacities, the executive functions that control them, which with okay. a good childhood, you are able to realize, you know, that maybe there's a shadow that comes across the room and your, your uh, subconscious thinks it's some monster coming after you. And then you, you look at it and you realize, oh, no, it's just a shadow. Well, with a good, well-functioning brain, you're able to then calm yourself down, calm yourself down right away. And, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. But for a poorly functioning brain, it, this panic reverberates and reverberates, and you can't get yourself back calmed down. And then everything, you start to be threat reactive with a, a poorly functioning um, brain, and you see threats everywhere. And so you're always in this state of panic. And so you look for something to calm yourself down. And it's out there because you don't have it inside because it wasn't developed well. And so you, uh, you latch on to something and, and, um, or your parents tell you to do this or they spank you into not paying attention to your own emotions and your own spirit, your own interests. And you then start to real, think that your, um, how to be a person is to be better than that group. And you just develop, it's like uh, when I was a kid, the male ego was a big thing people would talk about, you know, and there'd be guys you'd meet. And then you meet that you, know, you had to be careful how you talk to them because they had this chip on their shoulder that they're better than women, you know, and, and so you, <laughs> you knew that. And uh, that's a sign of fragility that that person is not flexible, not attuned. They treat you like a, you're a stereotype um, because that's their brain isn't fully developed. So it's a lot of right hemisphere stuff that's supposed to develop in early life that doesn't develop. And that that's what gives you the flexibility to be tuned into others. And so you end up then instead with a kind of a scripted, stereotypic kind of life. Uh, you use scripts when you go into a situation. Those people are, uh, this is my group, that's your group, you're evil, bad, whatever, or you stay in your place and then we'll all be fine, I mean, whatever it is. And if things go awry from your script, you get all upset and then you have to do something you're usually, um, for men, it's externalizing, we call it in psychology, which is aggression. You aggress towards the other, uh, like the recent um, killing of the black man who was jogging yes. down the street. He was somehow, um, uh, you know, not staying in his place as a black man for the two white fellows who killed him. Uh, and that's what would happen with women and men in my growing up years, uh, you didn't see it so much uh, anyway, but that's what happens, right? You, someone's violating your script and you blame them for it instead of realizing you have a very narrow script and you're very stress reactive and there's some healing that has to be done, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that speaks to uh, the shifting baselines, as you've discussed, where, well, I'll, I'll actually, I would just ask that you could please explain that concept a bit. Because uh, it applies sure. to to multiple fields of research and sciences and whatnot, but I guess maybe uh, discuss the general concept and how it applies to what you're discussing. Yeah, so baseline is uh, some form of what you think is normal, uh, and you can make comparisons to what you think is normal. And I, my complaints in psychology is they use baselines of what they think is normal psychology or normal human behavior or human nature from this narrow slice of people in the Western world, most of whom are unnested. So they, their brains are not fully developed as a human being. And yet they, they just assume the people coming into the lab are the ones that are their normal. And then 
oh, look, they scored this way. And so humans are always this way. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's happened, <laughs> what's happened is uh, there's just been this over time uh, a, a shift in baselines about what is normal, a uh, normal way to raise a child. Uh, and so, like I said before, leaving them alone in their own room, in their own crib, a baby, uh, letting them cry themselves to sleep, giving them formula, fake food, uh, and um, telling them you love them while you leave them alone gets them all confused because the world is alive and you've broken the continuum of feeling safe in the world. And now they have to somehow regroup so they develop some kind of psychopathology to survive. <clears throat> so that's the baseline then the shift away from nurturing child raising. And we have 99% of our history was in foraging nomadic bands who provide the nest, what I call the evolved nest, breastfeeding and uh, touch 24 seven, carrying all the time with the baby and uh, play and multiple adult caregivers. So it's not just mom or mom and dad. And just this whole uh, sense of community, constant communal connection and it builds a great brain a very intelligent social emotional intelligent uh, uh, way of uh, being with others and so uh, the baseline shifted away from that to this kind of un what I call undercare it's really neglect but that's a legal term so I say undercare and then that the yields uh, kids that are kind of dysregulated and self-centered and aggressive aggressive you know and we start to think that's normal of course, then we give them pills so they just sit there, sit there dully and listen to sit in school. You know, the one of the, at least the old definition of ADHD, uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in the manual uh, for psychiatrists and psychologists said uh, one of the definitions was will not sit still for boring tasks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what is that for? That's the adult. <laughs> forgotten what it means to be a child to be a child is to play all the time social play that's how you build your brain and the kids know that so we force them to sit still so that's another uh, slipped baseline so we think they're supposed to be aggressive and all and you have to punish them into being good well that's not the way it works in our ancestral context that's crazy and then you end up with adults who are depressed and anxious and lonely and unskilled and rigid and stiff-minded and stress-reactive. And we think that's normal now. Oh, human nature is selfish and aggressive. That's just the way. Yeah, but that's because we've been misraising people for generations now. That's not normal for our species. We haven't given them the species-typical nest. And then you end up adults, build a culture that perpetuates the cycle, whatever it is, right? So uh, in the animal studies, the parents who are poor uh, nurturers, usually it's the mothers uh, that are studied, and their daughters are worse. And so we end up with this getting, the cycle going down right now. And part of, part of the reason for uh, our uh, forgetfulness is that we've, we're a nation of immigrants, the United States, and they People came over without their extended families who knew how to raise babies. And there you are as a young couple and you don't know what to do. You both have to work. And so you start feeding your baby oatmeal and stuff and you kill it. <coughs> and this is the start of the American Academy of Pediatrics was all these mothers were killing their babies by feeding them non-breast milk because they had to go to work. Mm 